Hey everyone, Tommy here with Outrider USA. Hope you're doing great today. We're gonna to walk you through all the different ways that you can transport the Coyote. It's super lightweight, it's compact, it's easy to transport, and there's lots of different ways you can do it. Depending on what vehicle you've got and what gear you've got, we're gonna show you the different ways that you can haul it. Check it out. All right, so we got a Ford Edge midsize SUV here that we're gonna load the Coyote into, and we're gonna use a pair of Black Widow ATV ramps, all aluminum, and we're gonna use a cordless drill winch, and this is a load that somebody can do by themselves. Let's check it out. All right, so for a single person loading into a midsize SUV, I think this setup is really the way to go. We got a pair of Black Widow aluminum uh, ATV ramps. We've got a worn drill winch with a synthetic rope. We've got a cordless drill and we've got three straps. Could be ratchet straps, could be cam buckle straps, and that does it. All right, first you're gonna take your cam buckle strap or whatever strap you've got, it could be a ratchet strap, as long as it's not a bungee strap, and you're gonna attach it to the door here where when the door closes, it locks into this, this hard steel latch. So we're gonna put it on that. We're gonna go across the front or the back of the seats, just depending on your seat position. And I'm gonna put the opposite hook in that same latch on the opposite side of the car. So I'm just gonna climb across here, and latch it. And then pull that strap to where it's fairly tight. You don't need to be He-Man super tight on that, but you want it to be pretty snug. All right, next we're gonna set up the ramps. So grab one of your ramps. Nice thing about these aluminum ramps is they're super lightweight and really easy to handle and manage. So, depending on what you got, you can send it up on the deck here on the top of the vehicle, or you can put it down lower on the bumper, just depending on what your setup is, what makes more sense for you. Once you got those roughly in place, uh, you can, you know, I've got the Coyote here and I'm just looking at the track width of the Coyote, just how far the distance is between the tires. I'm just getting these ramps set up so they're roughly in the center of the tire. Making sure we're in a good position up here. And then after that, we're gonna take whatever strap you've got, could be a cam buckle, could be a ratchet like this and we are going to go underneath these ramps. This one has a hook, and it's really important that, really important that you latch into this hook so that as you're loading the bike, there's no chance that these ramps are moving or sliding on you. All right, so we've got these safety straps running from the loops on the undersides of these ramps, running forward to the latch where the hatch will attach. And these don't need to be super tight. Um, these can just be snug. And all they're doing is keeping these ramps from pulling off of the deck back here. Okay, so if you're challenged by the interior space in your vehicle, there's a number of things you can do on the Outrider to make it more compact for transport. If length is a challenge, you can take this footrest off. It comes off with just a couple quick turns of these two bolts here at the clamp. Be able to slide this out. You loosen those clamps you pull the footrest out and you'd set it on the seat and that'll reduce it from about six feet in length to about five feet in length. Another thing you can do if you're challenged by the height of it is to pull these pins at the back of the seat and then you can push this and just bury that seat until it's as low as it can go. And you've got, if you've got these pins and you need a place to put them, you can stick them in the side of the heat seat here. There's a couple places where those can live. If you need even more room and you need to get the seat even lower, you can adjust the slider on the seat and slide the seat forward and back to the spot where you can get the seat as low as possible. And also, if you're still challenged by the height, these handlebars can be folded down until they're folded flat so that you can bring this total height of the vehicle down even lower. Or you may just need to turn the mirror down if that's all you need. 
Um, and if you're really pushing it, this headlight can be low mounted uh, to get a bit more clearance up front. Okay, so we've got the drill winch here. Uh, some things about this, so obviously you got a hook on each side. Uh, one is the fixed hook that you're gonna attach to the vehicle. And then the other is the rope, which is gonna attach to the outrider. This has a freewheeling mode, which is unlock. And then it's got a locked mode for when you're driving it with the drill to use it as a winch. The opposite side of this is where your drill attaches. And you can see this is a synthetic rope on this one. It's just a super high strength rope. With your drill, you're gonna want that to be in speed mode, that's two. And so I'm just gonna loosen that chuck. I'm gonna tighten the chuck down on the drill winch till it's nice and tight. And now when I lock the drill winch and drive forward the drill, it operates as a winch. So that's the premise. We're gonna take this and we're gonna attach this end up to that strap we ran across at the front of the vehicle. And we're gonna attach this end to the outrider. All right, so here we've got our loop. We go up here. We're gonna catch our strap that goes across. We're gonna put this on unlock so we can pull out the strap. So we've got the hook and there's a number of different places you can clip into the outrider depending on uh, what angle you're coming from. I find this to be very easy right there on top of this boom. There's a good little hole there you can go through. Um, also, the outrider could be loaded backwards so you could put the rear end in first if needed, just depending on what vehicle you got. Sometimes one thing works better um, for certain vehicles. All right, so we're hooked up. We're hooked up to the vehicle. So next we're gonna take that winch and we're gonna lock it out and put it in the lock mode. And then we can just start to put some tension on the rope here. All right, once you've got your outrider right up to the beginning of the ramps and you've got tension on your rope, Go ahead and turn the machine on, key on, and also be sure to arm it as well. So hit the arm button so it's ready to go. And the reason for this is if the machine's on, it is actually gonna wanna hold position. So it makes it a little bit more stable that the bike is actively trying to stay in its own position if for whatever reason the bike came loose and rolled back or, or whatever you got going on. So. We've got it on, we've got it armed. Also double check that when the rope's crossing out of the back of the vehicle, it's not rubbing the weather seal on the vehicle back here. If it is, you may wanna just lay something down that's uh, anti-abrasive um, just to cover that area so you're not rubbing against that weather seal. All right, so we're all staged up, ready to go. I'm going to get up here and start driving the drill. And I can stop at any point, and the, obviously the winch is gonna hold position. If I need to course correct it all and turn the wheels a little bit, um, that's no problem. And I'll get right back to the drill. Do one more course correction. And once you're getting about to the crest, the bike's gonna wanna roll over the top on its own. So you just wanna be sure you've got control of it. It may be to the point where you can just ease it in by hand like this. And uh, so it doesn't surprise you as you're pulling it over with the winch. So just right when you're about to the top, you can roll it and get it that last mile. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the coyote off. One of the great things about these ramps is that they fit right under the machine. Um, so you can pull the ramp up, get these straps loose. 
Also unlatch them from the bottom of the ramps. Set those off to the side. And this machine has parking brakes, so I'm gonna set the parking brake. It's a good time to have a parking brake. Alternatively, if your tires are tight up against the back of the seats up front, you can find something you got laying around that works well as a wheel chalk back here. So you sit it in here and it can occupy the space. You could also do that with the ramps. So you don't even need a parking brake. The bike just literally has nowhere to go. Okay, so one important tip. When you've got the hooks up front running between your two doors, driver and passenger door, don't close your doors with those in place because it'll make a nasty clunk. Uh, so be sure to take those off before you close the doors. You can just leave the doors open while you're uh, doing this. So, okay. So next we are gonna show you how to get this thing out of here once you're at your destination. So of course we're gonna pop the hatch. I'm gonna pull these ramps out. And we're gonna take our safety straps again which you absolutely gotta have because these will move if you don't have these straps in place. And with these two, if you're always using them just for this purpose, you can just leave them at the sweet spot in their setting so you don't have to adjust them every time. So key on and hit the arm switch as well. The braking won't engage unless the arm switch is on. So it's super important to have the arm switch on. When I say arm switch on, it just means the throttle is live and active. So be super careful because if you bump the throttle, it will move. It's not a bad idea to have the bike in low power mode for this um, as a safety precaution. So we're just gonna roll it out by hand and course correct as needed. And again, this is just slowly rolling because of the bike's regenerative braking. So it'll keep it from getting out of hand. And of course, I've got the winch still hooked up up front. There's still slack on the rope though. It's not yet doing any work. We'll grab these brakes and let the bike ease down. And there's the tension. So now I'm on the tension of the winch cable. And so I'm gonna lower it the rest of the way by running the drill in reverse so the winch slowly lowers it down. Let's snap this in reverse and let's begin to lower the bike down. And don't forget to take your strap off that goes between your driver and passenger door. If you need to lower your power settings, and which I really recommend that as you're loading it into the vehicle, press and hold the left button, toggle with the right. So you're in low power, medium power, or high power mode. We're turning it back to high, getting ready to go riding. All right, so that's loading it into the Ford Edge midsize SUV with ramps and a drill winch. All right, so we're gonna show you how to load this thing just with two people. Check it out. First, stare off into the distance. Once you summon all of your power, put it into lifting it. Make sure there's a dog inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he's fine. Come on. We'll, we'll, we'll say. What are you gonna do? He's gonna get all squished. Right. Step one, you gotta get your dog out. Bruce, get out of the car. And step two is you put your coyote in the car. It's like a dog, just different. All right. <laughs> I'm here with Jacob, and we're gonna show you how to load the coyote into a mid-size SUV with two people. A couple things got to be done to make it fit. We're going to pull the pins on the recline here, recline the seat all the way down, stash these pins away on the side of the seat, and I'm going to fold this mirror down. All right, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to grab the front tires, load them in, then we're going to grab the rear tires and load them in. Pretty simple. So release the pins, let the bike roll up to the back edge of the vehicle, do a safe lift here. Get it up, roll it over the crest until it's touching there. 
And then we're going to grab the back wheel and stabilizing the front wheel. So that definitely takes a little bit of gusto to get that up. It's not super easy, but it is doable. So that's obviously, that's the no gear way to load this. Uh, you can do it with two people. All right. Now we're gonna take it back out. All right, so we're gonna pull these tires out till they're right to the crest. Then all the time, we're just holding onto these rims lowering it until it touches the ground and then grabbing these front wheels lowering them until they touch the ground and that's it then once you're out i'm just going to pull it back up put your pins back in the position and your mirror back all right there we go it's probably the simplest way to do it no equipment needed just a mid-size suv or a truck and you can do the two-man lift it does take a little bit of gusto for sure to do it but it is possible uh, with two folks that are ready to make that lift. All right. All right, so we're gonna show you how to load the Coyote into a pickup. You don't have to have a full-size pickup. This is just what we got here. So uh, this is gonna be with ramps and the Coyote in load mode. All right, so we've got the Coyote and we're gonna load it up using some aluminum ramps. We really like the Black Widow ramps. They're super light. Well made, easy to manage. They fit under the Coyote when stowed, which is pretty cool. Let's roll the bike back and get an idea of how far apart the ramps need to be. Get them in place. Eyeballing them to make sure that they're straight and parallel. All right. And then we're going to get our safety straps. And on the pickup, we've got corner loops here that we can catch. And I like these cam buckle straps because they don't have all the trickiness of using a uh, ratchet strap. They're just easier to manage, so these don't have to be blazing tight. Just going to get them snug so that they can't walk away from the pickup. Same thing over here. Catch the loop on the underside of the ramp. Take the ramp. Get that strap latched in and just take the tension off the strap or put tension on the strap, I should say. All right, so we're good there. So next, we're gonna get this Coyote set up so it can give us a little bit of assistance going into the pickup. You gotta be real careful with this. It takes a little finesse and little figuring out, but I'm gonna walk you through how to do it, changing the power settings on the CA so we can get just a light assistance as we head up the ramp. A couple things on the display. First, we're gonna get we're gonna press and hold the left button and toggle with the right to make sure that we're in low mode. Low mode is 1200 watts of power, so it's about a quarter of the maximum power the bike can put out. And low mode is typically about seven miles an hour. We're gonna edit that so the bike can only go two miles an hour. So press and hold the left button to enter the setup menu. And once you're in there, you're gonna to toggle to the right to where it says speed limit and I've already set it to two but I'm going to show you here how to edit it so press and hold the right button so it says okay it shows your speed there press and hold the right to edit and then it starts blinking the hundreds digit press and hold right to save press and hold right to save and if this said seven you can toggle it up and down to the number you want so you're at seven you'd hit the left button until it goes to two, press and hold right to save, press and hold right to save. So now we got a two mile an hour speed limit. To exit the menu, we can just hit e either button repeatedly to leave. So we keep hitting it over and over, over again until it says leaving setup. Now we got a two mile an hour speed limit. And one of the ways you can tell is if you hit the arm button, 
you're going to see on the top right of the display it says two miles an hour. If I disarm, it goes to zero. If I arm, it goes to two miles an hour. And it's going to give us 1,200 watts of assistance. So this next piece is what takes a little bit of finesse. Want to be careful um, because we're going to use a throttle to help us push it up the ramp. The bike's not going to be crazy powerful in this setting, so it's probably going to get to the point in the ramp, depending on how steep it is with your vehicle, uh, to where the bike isn't really able to push its own weight. So it's going to take just a little bit of assistance from you to get it up over the steepest part of the ramp and up into the back of the pickup. That's what we want, really. We want just the bike to bear its own weight and you to have to push just lightly to get it up in so it's under control, rather than tons of power and the bike feels like it's charging up the ramp. Of course, when you start to crest the ramp, then the bike's going to want to accelerate. So you'll just want to be ready to let off or grab that brake right there by the throttle. All right, so starting out, we're going to reach down and I'm going to put a hand on the seat and a hand on the right throttle and handlebar. And then I'm going to start giving assistance to the bike starts to move up. And then right about here, some bikes have traction control, some don't, the new ones do. So this is an older bike, might spin a little bit on the front tires. And then it's crested and you can just finish it off um, by hand. Of course, once it's up here, there's all different ways you could tie this thing down. Um, one of the hard points we like is there's a loop in the back of the enclosure why don't you come up a little closer here, you can see um, to where if you catch the corners of your pickup bed, the common tie down points that are available, you could come up here and put a hook uh, on the underside here where this hole is, or you could take the whole strap and wrap it over this, wrap, this rear um, hard point and then go over to your other corner and then do the same thing up front where you're just pulling counter pressure on the bike from both sides. I think most folks are pretty familiar with the ways to strap down a, um, a load in the back of a pickup, so we're not gonna go into that too much. But, um, so when it comes to coming back out, you're gonna do something similar. The bike should absolutely be on and armed so the regenerative brakes are on and ready. Um, honestly, the unloading is maybe a little trickier than the loading because as the bike comes out, um, you're just going to control the speed of it with a handbrake. Um, so let's roll this bike back. We'll make sure that the trajectory of the bike is right. The bike doesn't really want to move because it wants to gently hold position. So it's not going to be able to just fly down this ramp, but it will roll. Um, and so I'm grabbing the handbrake with my right hand and I'm just letting this bike slowly ease down So there we are. Um, pretty straightforward. Takes just a little bit of finesse to get used to it to where you're really comfortable with it. But it is absolutely possible with a pickup and with the bike in low power mode with a two mile an hour speed limit to load and unload on your own. So hope that helps. And uh, yeah, cheers. All right, we're gonna show you the two man lift with a pickup. Bike's off and that's fine. Uh, we're gonna roll it forward, grab the tops of the wheels Walk them forward until they're over the top of the tailgate and the bike's resting against the tailgate. It's solid there. And then we're gonna grab the rear wheel, the top of the rear wheel while holding the front and then bring the rear over the tailgate and into the back of the pickup. So that's a two man lift into a pickup. It definitely takes a little bit of gusto to get it up there. It's uh, certainly doable though. A uh, two pack machine is gonna be lighter than a four pack machine. All stuff that uh, should be considered, but it is absolutely doable if you've got two guys to lift it up into the back. All right. Go ahead and do it in reverse. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna show you how to unload the Coyote with two guys. So grabbing the top of the rear wheel and we're gonna lower this down to the ground until it's touching. Then we're gonna grab the front wheel, top of the front wheel, and lower that down to the ground. And that's it, pretty straightforward. Um, 
there's all kinds of different points you could grab on this, but we find when we're doing the two person load that grabbing the top of those wheels is the thing that really works best. All right. All right, next we're gonna show you how to haul an outrider in a trailer. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory, but we had to have an excuse to show the silver bullet. Uh, but yeah, check it out. If you're shopping for trailers, don't buy this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's a couple options out there. You've got utility trailers, which you can pretty much go get any Lowe's or Home Depot five by eight utility trailer. A couple considerations there. There's ones with expanded metal floors. Those are gonna be more grippy, but also more flimsy. And then there's ones that are a little more expensive with wood floors. And those are gonna be less flimsy, more solid but you'll probably want to add something on the deck to make it a little bit grippier uh, when it gets wet. Um, so those are utility trailers. Five by eight is plenty of space uh, for a coyote. Uh, you could also consider an enclosed trailer if you want to make sure that it doesn't get wet. It's a lot more secure. People aren't looking at it. Um, those trailers, you probably want to go to a proper trailer dealer for that kind of option. Uh, this is an enclosed trailer, but it's homemade, obviously. Um, but I love an enclosed trailer because you don't worry about the weather. You don't worry about people thinking about taking it or, you know, any of that stuff. And you can put all kinds of other gear in there and have lots of other uses for it. So I would recommend an enclosed trailer if it's workable for you. Um, but if not, a uh, utility trailer is a perfectly fine way to start. You can always get creative and add on the utility, tra utility trailer to make it what you want. This one was a utility trailer. It was five by eight, and we folded the uh, tailgate down, relocated the axle, moved it more rearward. Now it's a five by 11 and a half utility trailer, and we made this aluminum clamshell for the top so we could haul multiple outriders at once in the rain, cross country, and get good mileage on the diesel and be able to cover a lot of ground. So. Um, lots of options out there. I love using a trailer. Uh, some folks don't like pulling trailers, and obviously if you don't want to pull a trailer, there's many other ways to go. Also, Aluma Trailers makes really nice aluminum trailers that some of them will even stow vertically in a garage, so they can be really manageable. They don't have to take up a ton of space. Um, some motorcycle trailers will work. Uh, some are a little bit too narrow, but lots of options out there to choose from. All right, so there are, of course, other ways to transport an outrider. We just covered a few different ways today. I think probably the most compelling transport method that we didn't cover today is transporting it on a hitch carrier. There are a few good options out there. There are a couple really good options that would allow someone uh, from a wheelchair to solo transfer and load and unload a coyote. And so. We weren't able to film that today. Uh, we're gonna share a little bit more info on the different manufacturers you can consider. There's one in particular that we really like. Uh, so you'll have that hitch carrier option as well. I hope this video is really helpful. And please, as always, if there's anything you wanna know that we didn't cover, uh, please let us know, leave a comment, and we'll try to address it in our next video. All right, thank you, take care.